Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Nicola, I'm a mum out of three. Um, I have a little boy called Lucas and I have twin girls, Harper and Quinn, um, who are now two. One of which who happens to have Down syndrome, which makes them a very unique set of twins. I'm all about hacks, tips, and lots of education around Down syndrome. If you want to follow our journey more and more in depth, then please head over to our Instagram account, um, Bailey and the Babies. So today's YouTube is going to be all about um, portage, is what we call it in um, the UK. So it's basically daily therapy that we do with Harper um, to get her to meet her milestones. Um, it's been massively requested over on my Instagram page. Um, I am going to break it up because it's quite complex, all the stuff that we do with her on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I just thought I would break it up into small sections. And today's section is going to be about socialisation and self-help. So we started Portage with Harper when she was just around one. Um, she just turned, I think, two months after her first birthday is when we first started having um, sessions with Portage. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step of what we did from her being one right up until the age that she is now, which is two and a half. Um, I can give you all the tips that we had, uh, which has helped us progress Harper on. Okay, so some of the first tasks in the early doors linked to socialisation were rolling a ball back and forth to each other. So I would sit and I would prop Harper up. Harper could sit at this point, but she was still quite unstable. So she'd use her hands um, to like lean upon. So I had to use to prop her up. I will talk more about how we got Harper um, sitting and what we did with that in later videos. Um, so keep an eye out for those coming up. But the first task, like I said, linked socialisation was rolling a ball. Don't wait to become disheartened because when you first start doing this, it can feel a bit and you roll a ball and she just kind of looked at it, didn't really understand. Then you'd have to show you rolling it back with a lots of encouragement. We're sort of doing lots of clapping. You did it, half a roll it, lots of simple terms. Um, I always used wording that was like Harper rolls or if you're doing a different activity, the Harper does what other activity it is um, just because that way she links that those two words together so Harper rolls and then we'd roll the ball for her and then we'd clap like as if you've done it and then over weeks and weeks we literally did this task every single day only for a few minutes per day but you'd roll it to her and roll it back with hope that she would eventually roll the ball back which obviously she did the next sort of activity linked trans socialization was getting it to wave bye to people. Um, so at first, again, you would be doing the prompting. You would show them if someone's leaving, we say bye. And then Harper says bye. So Harper says bye. And you'd literally like literally pick a hand up and do the waving um, to get her to show that when someone is leaving, that is how we say bye. And then the last thing that we were sort of doing linked to that was reading a book. So Harper's always loved books. So we'd get her to sit and we'd get her to read and we'd say, Harper's turn so she would get to turn a page by encouraging it at first again it was so much of a struggle and she didn't really understand um, but the more and more you practice the more and more she understood that she can turn the pages herself. So those goals were in place for around three months and we practiced those day in day out and these are still activities that we still do today even though she can do the majority of those um, without any prompting she just, she just does them automatically now but you still need to continue practicing these they're only a simple task to do um, and it probably takes just a couple of minutes but it's that repetition um, that really helps with children with down syndrome understand um, what activities they're doing so after three months we went on to a next set of goals linked to socialization and these were as follows so the first one was we'd place an item at the other side of the room, um, particularly something that she might have liked, like she's always liked rubber ducks, so we'd get her like a little rubber duck and we'd put it at the other side of the room. Harper was at the other side and we'd encourage her to come and get the rubber duck. So we'd be like, Harper, come, Harper, come, and then she'd come and collect the rubber duck. Again, she didn't quite understand that at first, so at first we'd be getting it and taking it to her. Um, and encouraging her to come and collect it on her own. Um, so that was one of the first tasks after the first three months that we worked on. Another good task that we started to do with her is getting her to imitate sort of adult tasks. So um, one of the easiest ones we found to get her to do was to wipe things. So um, mummy wipes the table, 
half a wax the table and you give her a cloth and you'd show her what you're doing and you get her to do the same. So it's that copying sort of command what you're doing. Uh, sometimes we'd have like a little song with it to encourage her. Um, a lot of them were just made up, but there weren't any specific songs. I'd just sing like, mummy wipes, 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 Harper does it. And then if she didn't, you'd take a hand with the cloth and get her to do it. And then give again, lots and lots of praise that she is doing that activity. So now Harper at this point was mastering the art of rolling a ball. We turned that into a game. So the next part of that is getting a child to wait their turn. So you do it with one child and another. In my case, that was very, very easy because I had um, twins. So I had Quinn there to help. So we'd get Quinn to roll the ball to Harper and then she has to wait her turn and then she rolls the ball back. Um, you could do it with other games, so it might be that you put in jigsaw pieces or pegs in something um, and Quinn does it and then you have to wait and then it's Harper's turn to do it. And at first you just do it with one other child. If you don't have a twin, um, then you could always do it with an older sibling or you could also do it with yourself, just get them to wait and understand that they have to wait their turn. So those tasks took us quite a while um, to get the hang of, particular things like coming to collect objects um, and stuff like that. And now she can do it. Um, I've never liked to force Harper fastly into the next stage. I've always just gone with how she's learned. Um, so these ones took us a good six months to master. Um, and then unfortunately the COVID situations happened. Um, so we've had therapy put on hold um, and we have just got some new goals that are, we are going to be working on. So I'll just go through um, the activities of those ones for the age that she's currently at now. So now Harper's mastered, if I ask her to fetch something, she can do it with various objects within the same room. So can you fetch mummy the book? Can you fetch the bricks? Harper understands that. And if she, she tends to bring one object at a time. So if we've got lots of bricks around and I'll say, Harper fetch the bricks, she'll fetch literally one brick. So obviously the sign for more is this. So I'll say more bricks, please. And then she'll go and fetch more bricks back and forth. Because she can do that now, the step that we are on to now is getting her to come and find an object outside of that room. So in the next room, so it might be something that I will place in there. So I might place the duck in the kitchen and I'm in the lounge and I'll ask her to go and fetch the duck from the kitchen. Um, the way we're going to be doing this at first is obviously taking her into the kitchen to go and fetch that um, and then bringing it back. And then again, with lots of praise that she's done it. And then hopefully over time with practicing that, she will go into another room to fetch another object. Harper's got very good at the waiting game now, um, particularly with her and Quinn. So the next step is introducing more children. So we'll be doing the bigger games with maybe Lucas and myself in there and she has to wait four turns of doing something. So she's not just rushing in and putting something in. It'll be Quinn's turn, Lucas' turn, Mummy's turn, Harper's turn. So she has to wait longer um, because she does tend to be a little bit of an eager beaver uh, with wanting just to jump in there. Um, so like I said, she can do it with one wait, but we have to build that time span of how long she can wait for before it's her turn. And going right back to the beginning now, um, Harper can obviously wave bye-bye now. Um, so it's introducing more other socialising skills. So if you give her something, which she's already on the path to doing this quite well now. Um, she actually speaks thank you to a word, it's more of a coup, uh, which is thank you, we understand that, and she can sign the word thank you too, um, and again she can sign please, um, so if she's wanting something we have to get her to say something and then use the word please, um, so it's encouraging those signs or language depending on how you're using um, vocabulary with your children, uh, but that is the next part of socialisation, getting to do correct signage uh, when it's required. So that is all the activities. They don't seem very much, I know. Um, however, they do, because you're doing them day in, day out, they're just little things that you can just add in. Um, portage and therapy shouldn't be sort of work. And I think at first it seems like it's a lot of therapy to do. However, if you just sort of put it into your daily activities, it, you're doing it every day, but it's not becoming sort of a chore that you sit down and do it. You're just doing it in playtime or you're doing it during feeding and things like that. That's the way we found it works best. Um, so moving on from the socialisation bit, another part of therapy that we was learning around was self-help. Um, so the first thing that we were doing sort of with self-help, when Harper was one, we really struggled with her feeding herself with a cup. So she couldn't seem to pick a cup up. So the cup that we had was a beaker with two handles on it. And how we approached this to start off with is that we would put a cup in front of Harper and then I would physically pick it up and put it to her mouth, encouraging her to drink from, um, the, it was like a teetered spout. 
Um, and then the next step of that was to put her hands on the cup. So you're physically doing it. You put your hands on the cup and you pick the cup up to allow for it. So she understood that that happened. And then over time of practicing that three times a day, we were kind of doing it at meal times. Um, she would then start doing it herself to which she can really do that now. And she can go and drink out of straws and drink out of bottles. She does various um, different types of cups. Once we'd mastered the cup, another activity that we were doing to self-help was getting her to feed independently. Um, so the way that we did this is we started to, originally she used to feed it with hands, so we put finger food down for her. And I think that's sometimes easier. Once they built up the arm strength, uh, which Harper always had quite good tone um, to her arms, she was very, very strong. Um, so we didn't have an issue with her actually putting things to her mouth. Um, it was more of the understanding side of it that she didn't grasp. Um, so food for us was quite an easy way for her to start doing that because she loves food. Um, so she'd always just grab it and eat. Um, the one that I was trying to work on was cutlery. So the first pour, what we did is we got some little cutlery and we used to load the fork ourselves, put it down and then say, Harper do it, Harper do it. Um, and if she didn't do that, we'd again put a hand physically on the fork and take the fork to her mouth. Um, and she did quite grasp this. We left this quite late to start doing it. So I think she was around, it was just after Christmas. So she was just before her second birthday, we started introducing the fork aspect to her eating. Um, so yeah, so she's, she's picked that up quite quickly that she she can use the fork now. Um, sometimes she does need assistance uh, with certain foods. We try and do foods that she can easily stab um, because again, if you're trying to get a child to load like a fork for peas, for example, and they're all falling off, they can become easily discouraged. So I would say in the first port, when you're trying the fork, um, try a lot of foods that are easily grabbed with the fork itself. So they, they understand that they're getting a reward from using that fork. And now we are on to mastering the spoon. Um, the fork was the easiest because like I said, it was more of a solid object. Um, however, we are encouraging her now to try and feed herself with a spoon. So that might be scooping something up. Um, so it's the scooping action. Um, that she is particularly struggling with. So again, I've gone back to the early doors where we assist her with it, but she does it because she does get very, very angry um, at this moment in time if we take that off her and feed her. She doesn't want to be fed. And you can understand why. She's seen a brother and a sister sat there. They're feeding themselves independently and she wants to do that. So we never take away the independence that she's got. We always just work on what, she's, what we've got and encourage her to continue and just keep practicing at it. So I'm hopeful that in the next sort of few months we'll have mastered the spoon as well. So that's it for today. I hope you really liked the video and I hope you find it useful um, to use this with your little ones. If you do have any questions, then please comment below and I will get back to you. Or alternatively, you can always head over to my Instagram. Like I said, it's Bailey and the Babies and I will happily answer any direct messages that you may have regarding this type of therapy that we do with Harper. The other sort of topics I will be covering in the next couple of weeks in this series will be communication. There will be cognition and motor skills, including fine motor and gross motor. If you liked this video and you want to see more of this content, then don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And there is always the subscribe button, which I'd be really grateful for if you want to hit that button. So thank you very much for following me and I will see you again soon. Bye.